Hi, my name is Rich Harrington for Adorama TV, and today I want to give you a quick overview of the brand new Phantom 2 Vision quadcopter. Now this is the second generation quadcopter, and essentially it uses four propellers. Now this quadcopter is from DJI, and it includes a couple of pretty cool things. One of the things I like the most is that it has an integrated first person view type of camera. Let's take it out of the case here. Now I've put mine here in an optional hard case just to make it easier to travel. This is a nice option here to really make it easy to get from locations with this if you have to fly with it. We're starting to use this in our production work, but this is a copter that's equally well designed for people who would consider themselves hobbyists as well as people that are videographers or photographers. You could take both stills and video with the camera. All right, let's take this out here of the case and we'll start with the body. There we go. Now, essentially, this is a ready-to-fly design. There's minimal assembly that you need to put together here in order to get this up and running. But what's going to happen is you start off by really needing to simply attach the propellers. Now, the propellers are color-coded. There are black tips and silver tips, and that corresponds on the actual quadcopter here. This one's silver, and this one is black. Now, essentially, what's happening is the rotors spin in opposite directions. So you end up with two black and two silver here. To put these on, you just simply look at the actual copter, and you've got directions on how to turn. So I could take this silver one, put it on the silver, and it tells me which way to spin it to lock or unlock. Right there on the propeller is the definition. And in this case, I'm going to turn the silver to the right to lock it. While I do that, I have a tendency to hold on to the base here to minimize any rotation. And this spins the opposite direction. There we go. And let's just put the others on. And essentially turn that gently so it locks into place. They will self-tighten a bit as it's flying. You don't want to fly with them too loose, but they're designed to stay tight on their own. All right, we've got the blades mounted. Now, a couple things I'd recommend considering picking up. You might want to grab some extra propellers. You can order spares of these. This is one of the things that may break as you fly. And another useful accessory are propeller guards that you could attach. These get attached with screws here and can essentially help protect people from collisions with the propellers, as well as if you have an unwanted crash, the guard is going to hit before the propeller, and that'll keep these in better shape. All right, well, let's sort of break this down. On the front here, you see the integrated camera. It is a 14 megapixel camera capable of shooting both stills and video. It'll record 1920 by 1080 HD video at 30 frames per second, and it makes a wireless connection down to a smartphone using the smartphone app. So you have your controller, and it has an integrated Wi-Fi base station here, essentially, and this will transmit a signal. And what you can do is connect your smartphone to that same device, and then you actually have a holder here designed for the phone. And you can clamp your phone in, or iOS touch device, and then actually remotely monitor the screen. Now this is kind of cool. One of the main reasons why I liked this integrated system is that this camera connects to the app. And while it's flying, you can remotely tilt or pan this camera to adjust the framing and make other essential changes. Now powering the device is pretty simple. You're going to want to take the included battery pack, and this just snaps in in the back. It makes a firm click. When it comes to batteries, you're going to get about 25 minutes of flight time, maybe 20, depends on the amount of wind, how much you're using some of the features like the Wi-Fi. I would encourage you to consider picking up extra batteries. In fact, I have four batteries because this gives me about two hours of flight time. If you want more than that, then you're going to need to pick up even more batteries. And of course, you can charge the batteries, but the charge time is going to be a little bit longer than the depletion time, so it's always a good idea to have extras. Plus, if you're out there in the field, you might not have a place to plug the batteries in to charge them. When you're flying here, it's relatively easy. You've got a simple controller that gives you the ability to fly up and down, 
left and right. Now the camera itself records to an SDHC card. It's important that you use SDHC. We noticed when trying to put an SDXC card in, it didn't successfully record, although it looks like the manufacturer is rolling out support via firmware. That is one of the good news, is that these cameras do have a USB port, so it's easy to feed in firmware updates, both to the controller and the camera. At most, you're just gonna have to remove a panel with a screwdriver to access that, although depending upon when your unit was manufactured, that gets easier and easier. When you're flying, it is extremely assisted. It makes it much easier. You've got a GPS that's really keeping the unit and helping you control. When you release, it essentially hovers in a fixed position. You don't have to worry about it continuing to go up or down or drift side to side. It'll maintain position. This makes it much simpler when you're doing things like shooting video or stills because other than the wind, it'll basically stay in the same spot, making it easier to hover. You don't have to keep going back and forth. Now, with two people, since you can remove this, you can have a partner helping you, and one person can essentially remotely control the camera while another person flies the copter. If you don't want that assisted mode, you can flip this into attitude mode, and this gives you a more manual type of control, and it allows you to have drift as you're flying, things like that, so that you can get more motion type shots. However, this is a little bit more subject to wind, and so I personally prefer using the GPS mode most of the time. Now, if the unit for some reason loses its connection between these, it has a return to base sort of moment. It'll essentially go to 60 feet and then come back to the home position, which is where you started when you calibrated the device. This makes it a lot easier. And the intelligent orientation control in the unit will essentially make sure that as the camera's flying, it keeps the front towards the front and the back towards the back. And this is in relationship to you. So as you push forward, it's gonna to continue to go forward. And as you pull back, it'll come back. Makes it pretty easy. And that remote control camera, the good news is, is it works with both iOS or Android. So this means just about any tablet or smartphone on the market is going to work with this. And it'll really help you take not just control of the camera, but really see what's going on, as well as help find the unit if you need to use it as a locator. The quadcopter comes with another piece of software. This will allow you to do firmware updates, as well as essentially provide some additional calibration tools for the unit if needed. The manual flying mode is gonna be turned off by default using that GPS assisted mode. If you need to engage the manual flying mode because you are an experienced pilot, you'll have to use the software to do so. I recommend sticking in GPS mode for most of the time. All right, beyond the batteries here, Couple simple things that I like about this compared to the earlier versions. When you power this on, it actually has a built-in LED status. So you can see there that this particular battery is partially depleted, and that's useful. Now, powering on and off the camera, a little bit trickier. You have to push the button twice and hold it. And at this point, you need to calibrate the unit before flying. Now, calibration is a fairly simple process you essentially end up rotating around in two circles, orienting the unit, and the lights on the bottom will give you some visual feedback on when the device is calibrated. Right now it's flashing yellow, meaning that it needs to be calibrated. Push that twice and power down. I'm not gonna fly this unit indoors. No matter how tempted you are, find a place in your area that you are allowed to fly this unit. And just a couple of things of note to keep in mind. There may be some restrictions in your area as to where you fly a copter. Generally speaking, avoid government properties and things like airports so that you don't run into any trouble with local authorities. And make sure you practice with this unit before you get into heavily crowded areas. It's important to go someplace rather desolate so you get the hang of flying initially in a large field without a bunch of other people around. If you are looking for a fun way to get interesting footage, cool angles, or perhaps aerial photography or videography, I can highly recommend this unit. I've been a DJI customer now for both versions of their product, as well as they have different versions of the product. So you can get other types of quadcopters from them, including integrated gimbals for stabilizing the camera or additional pan and tilt functionality. Be sure to head on over to Adorama.com and just type in DJI and you'll see all of the accessories as well as the quadcopters that are available. And of course, to learn more about photography and video, you'll want to check out the Adorama Learning Center. I'd like to thank you for watching this episode. Remember, you can subscribe to Adorama TV on YouTube or iTunes to get every episode absolutely for free. 
For Adorama, my name's Rich Harrington. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.